Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Yeah, sorry I haven't done a video in a while on account of being totally busy, you know, with finals and birthdays and all this other stuff, so yeah, plus I had to take a break too. Because I wanted to watch some of my movies that I haven't watched in a while. I mean I wanted to do some more videos, but again I never had time. So it happens. Um but I did also want to watch some new movies that came out uh, in recent years. But I did actually finally got to see one, a brand new Godzilla film, simply called Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yep. This is actually a sequel to the 2014 film, which is also part of the 35th film in the Godzilla franchise. Yes. Because he's been around for a very long time. Since 1954. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I know people have been complaining about the 2014 film, saying that, you know, Godzilla hasn't been getting enough screen time, not enough fight scenes, and yes, they were even complaining about Brian Cranston's death in the film. Yeah, when he played his character as a scientist. Um, granted, though, I came in just to see Godzilla as opposed to the human characters which yes even the human characters were, were taking a, a lot of screen time more than than the creatures and I understand I mean I, I, I admit it too that that was one of the problems um, or even two for that matter but at the same time I did enjoy Godzilla 2014 I guess you could say, you know, maybe they wanted to be just like the 1954 film. You know, sometimes they they had to focus on the characters to actually figure out who they are, and before we finally get to see the creature. So it, it takes some time. You know, people need to do the research. They need to do all the information. They need to find out where they're headed. They had to find out about the history, the origin, everything. So it, it takes a lot of time. I mean, because otherwise the film could have been a lot longer. Um, but with that aside, um, I'm ha I'm happy to hear that this movie, despite the fact that it's getting mixed reviews from critics, which I'm sorry, doesn't deserve, because um, it really deserves um, more positives than negatives. This is definitely the Godzilla film we've all been waiting for. So now we get to see all the monsters joining in, as opposed to Godzilla. Yeah. And we finally get to see more battles. We do get to see humans in the film. But granted, they're taking their time, but because it centers the story. But we do get to see a lot of action joining in, so and more destruction, everything. So this is this is a love letter to all fans out there who love Godzilla. And all these monster movies, those creature features, everything. So just happy that you know, we got what we got. Plus, it's also cool that we got uh, Cal Chandler in the film. Yeah, because Cal Chandler is such an underrated actor. I mean, I always loved him ever since uh, the TV series Early Edition. You know, when he played Gary Hobson. You know, a guy who's a stockbroker, a former stockbroker, before he wants up running a restaurant. Teams up with his best friends. You know, like, like Chuck Fishman and... Uh, Marissa, yeah. who's a uh, blind woman, and black. So it's basically the adventures of you know Gary Hobson, you know, try to save people's lives, you know, by getting tomorrow's newspaper today. That's on his doorstep. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we also got Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things, who plays uh, Eleven. So it's great to see her playing a different role. I mean, at times I'm almost starting to feel like there's going to be a nod to it. We also got Burrow Flaminga, who was uh, previously in the film The Commuter with uh, Liam 
Liam Neeson. Um, and I know she's been in other films too. Uh, we got Bradley Whitford uh, from Get Out. Yeah, he's in the movie. Uh, Sally Hawkins, uh, who was also in the, the movie as well, the 2014 film. But she was also in The Shape of Water, uh, as well as the Paddington films and many others. We even got Charles Dance, uh, who was the villain in The Golden Child and The Lap and Last Action Hero. And other actors like David Strathern. He's been in a lot of films. Uh, Ken Watanabe and Zing Zai. who was, uh, and of course Zing Zai as well. It's definitely what I was expecting. Plus you got a wonderful score, all that. Beautiful cinematography. A lot of great editing and destruction, all that. That's what you want in a Godzilla movie. So, let's get to the reveal. Stars once again Kyle Chandler, Burra Flaminga, Millie Bobby Brown, Bradley Whitford, Sally Hawkins, Charles Dance, Thomas Middleditch, Alicia Hines, O'Shea Jackson Jr., David Strathern, Ken Watanabe, and Zhang Zai. It's written by Michael Doherty, the same writer and director who had worked on films like Trick or Treats and Krampus. Yep. He also came up with the story, joining in with Max uh, Borenstein and Zach Shields, again based on Godzilla and all the rest of the Avengers. And it's directed by Michael Doherty. The movie begins when we meet Emma Russell, who's a pale biologist, played by Burr Flaminga, working for a crypto zoological organization called Marnark, just so she could track down and study all the titans that's led by Godzilla and the rest, which are giant monsters that actually dominated the Earth, you know, coming from a nuclear radiation. She has a daughter named Madison, who's played by Millie Bobby Brown, who actually witnessed the birth of a giant larva known as Mothra. So, what they do was they decided to use the device called the Orca to actually calm Mothra down because um, she was going completely out of control. You have Mothra, of course, is the, the queen of the monsters. So, they came, they came up with um, an emitting frequency just to calm her down, but that is until an equal terrorist that's led by Alan Jonah, you know, played by Charles Dance, decided to attack all the scientists and kidnaps both Emma and Madison, while Mothra managed to escape with, from her cocoon and go straight underneath a waterfall. Yeah. But that's when we meet all the monarch uh, scientists and soldiers joining by and all led by Ishiro uh, Suozawa and Vivian Graham, both played by Ken Watanabe and Sally Hawkins, which they actually went and approached uh, Mark Russell played by Kyle Chandler, who happens to be the ex-husband of Emma, to, to track down both Emma and Madison, see where they are. So, because uh, what happened was, uh, back in 2014, the Russell family had lost their son yeah, during the, the battle between Godzilla and the Mutos that happened. So they were trying to search uh, for him, but all, all was lost. So. so, since then, you know, Mark just wasn't uh, getting along with Emma. So that's why he had to leave. You know, he, he had a drinking problem. 
you know, he was too busy, you know, trying to take pictures, you know, creating sound waves and everything from from the the dogs around, you know, just hunting dogs. I mean, that that's basically what he was spending time doing. So anyway, they came by to follow Godzilla to Antarctica and realized that Jonas was intended to free the Titans, all the creatures around, which they even joined in with Monster Zero. So Jonas' team just ambushed and the, the monarch soldiers with Mark joining in, which he was unable to rescue uh, both Emma and Madison. So he had to run along with the rest of the soldiers as they're being chased down, you know, by Monster Zero. And for those who don't know, the Monster Zero is a free headed dragon. Yes. So they're about to attack um, all the soldiers and everyone around. Which this is where they had to escape as soon as they can, trying to go back inside all the uh, drone planes that they had and, and all these other all the other planes going around so they could escape but unfortunately one of the scientists got killed as well as half of the other soldiers joining them so the Titan had so they began a rampage until Godzilla appears and attacks uh, Monster Zero so it was like a huge battle to join in. So then now they had to escape, and now they're going for the next target, which is in Mexico. And this is where they're being contacted by Emma when she started to use the Orca. Because it was basically her involvement with Jonah all this time just to finish her research by following, by continuing t to. Uh, tried to um, revive all the monsters and everything that was going around not to mention you know but what happened in the past even though it's not gonna bring back their son and by the way their son's name is Andrew they were planning on using the oxygen destroyer you know so that way they could destroy all the creatures hoping that this would you know, they'll save everyone's lives. But apparently it did actually got Godzilla who got sunk into the ocean, but Monster Zero suddenly survives. Even though, yes, they were being attacked by another creature called uh, Rondan. Yeah. Think of it as like the uh, like Q the Wind Serpent. You know, like that, that kind of creature. It's it's like that, a uh, a wing creature that's about to attack uh, the rest of the crews, all the uh, the pilots around. You know, I'm hoping that they'll be able to go all the way straight into it, so they can destroy them. So Dr. Eileen Chen, who's played by Zing Zai, um, as he had revealed that uh, Monster Zero is. Uh, Adora, which is an ancient alien who's being served for the rival for Godzilla, you know, used for Predator, and how they burged and everything. So once uh, they were at Boston, Ember realized that the destruction of the Godora, along with the other Titan monsters of Brown, already are going to be a <clears throat> are going to bring a lot of worse things happening to the entire city because that's where we're going to have a huge destruction and this is where we're going to get the big battle once they they arrive um, of course Madison um, Madison wasn't getting along with uh, with his so anyway Madison wasn't getting along with her mother Emma about what was happening, about what she just did, you know, how she she free all the the monsters and trying to which could attack all the humans and everyone around 
also responsible for leaving her father behind. Yeah. And she decided to run away. She had to go all the way to the, uh, the, the baseball stadium of the Red Sox, and this is where all the creatures had arrived. Yeah, the Titans, which at this rate, Monster Zero. So, she was trying to find a better place to hide so she doesn't get killed. So she had to go all the way back to her home to hoping that she'll be safe. Meanwhile, yeah, Mark, the rest of the the monarch uh, scientists and soldiers are trying to track them down, hoping they'll be able to find them and find a place to be safe. Yeah, same goes with uh, Emma, who just joined by to save them all. So, and so I had to leave uh, Jonas behind with the rest of his team, which they're about to go after. So, this is where we finally get the battle scenes between Godzilla and Monster Zero, as well as the other ones joining. Them. So this was like one huge battle after another, and this is what we really expected. So I'm gonna leave it that way. I mean, I I know I had to talk as much as I could trying to figure out some words to describe. I just don't want to give away too much of the plot because if you haven't seen the movie then what are you waiting for? Go check it out. But all I'm going to say though is that I waited this long to actually see a Godzilla film where it's more of the creatures and less of the humans. But yes, the humans did, did get enough screen time and so is the creatures, so at least now we, we got a Godzilla film that we were expecting. Um, I love the battle scenes, uh, you know, with Monster Zero, you know, the free-headed dragon, you know, attacking, and, you know, Godzilla just came by, you know, just taking down the monster, and, you know, just like eating it, and, you know, breathing all that fire that's coming from his tail, yeah, because it brasses all that, those flames, and and defeats it. And I love how we got Mothra joining in too. It, yeah, it was great to see Mothra. I mean, she she actually helps uh, take down Monster Zero as well. You know, just using her power. You know, just uh, <laughs> by uh, shooting webs and caught them, and even the, take down the. Uh, the Ronin creature, yeah, the wing creature. I, I, I love that the moment, you know, during the battle in Boston where she has to took down the cut down, defeated that creature. So awesome that I just couldn't believe my eyes. Um, there's a lot of that in the movie, and and it, it you know it was it was handled very well. I mean, I gotta say, they, Michael Doherty really did an awesome job directing, writing, and and put a lot of effort to it, you know, because this is what we need. We need more action. And it was all there. I mean, are, are there the weakest parts in the film? Yeah. The argument between the Madison and Emma, you know, the mother and daughter fiend, and she also gave a speech to them about uh, on why she had to let out all the creatures, the titans, because of what the humans did. You know they, you know they they're the ones who created all the chaos, the, the pollution, and all this, and the nuclear radiation that actually revived these creatures. You know how, you know they want them to survive more than we do. But at the same time, uh, they're, they're going to try to find a way not to, you know, have create human extinction the way you know this hap the creatures are that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> it's almost like you know we had to have um, we had to have the leader to do all this stuff. 
You know, it's like it's human nature and all that sort of thing. Yeah, that's what we expected. Because they're, they're trying to save things so that way, you know, they can survive. That's what they're trying to do. You know, they want they want all the creatures to survive. And they don't want that to happen. Because apparently they had to find a way to, to set them free. And they want to be able to not get destroyed or anything. But then, of course, they had to destroy them because of what they did. But either way, um, but other than that, I did enjoy the cast that we got. I mean, for the human characters. I mean, Kyle Chandler definitely did a great job uh, playing uh, Mark. You know, I mean, you know, at first he wasn't. Um, he, he wanted the monsters to be destroyed at first, but then he realized that. You know, they want to be able to help him out because. After all, he, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't think about what happened five years ago with the loss of his son, uh, Andrew, and, and the fact that, you know, he, he divorced uh, Emma for, for what was happening. Like, that's why, you know, he didn't have time to see uh, his daughter. So that's why. So he has to be busy doing what he does best, you know, like taking pictures, and, you know, just creating fruit seeds or do all this other stuff. Uh, Burr Flamingo was also very good too, uh, playing the Emma, the paleontologist, and Millie Bobby Brown as um, as Madison. Well, they they sometimes called her Maddie. I mean. She was also very good too. I mean, even though she actually believes uh, what Mark was doing, and I think she she believes more than than Emma because you know because she's been going through a lot lately, you know, trying to deal with uh, you know, her problems and all that. And I see a great cast joining in. Uh, and it's also nice to see uh, Ken Watanabe returning, you know, along with Sally Hawkins and all the rest of the other guys. Um, Bradley Whitford as Dr. Rick Stanton, yeah, he, he, he basically uh, <laughs> is a comic relief. I mean, he just joins in just to, you know, come up with some laughs and all that. <laughs> so, apparently uh, they... Um, from what I heard, uh, Doggity actually uses uh, that character sort of like a take on uh, Rick Sanchez from the TV show Rick and Morty. So it's almost like they were going for that. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I don't watch Rick and Morty, but um, I guess I knew they were going to go for something more humorous. So the movie was not boring at all. I mean,. You definitely get what you want in a Godzilla film. I mean, it's entertaining, it's it's fun, it's exciting. You know, what do you expect? You get to see the rest of the creatures that we're all familiar with uh, from the previous uh, Godzilla films. And hopefully, you know, we get to see even more when, when they do another Godzilla film pretty soon. So, can't wait. So, anyway, if you haven't seen it, check it out. <laughs> You're going to have fun during the summer. Because, you know, we're already having a big summer as it is. So, anyway, that's Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Long live the king, <laughs> as they could say. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.